What is up, everybody? Welcome to the RPD. My name is Barry, as in Where's Barry? And this is the greatest Resident Evil show in the history of the world. It's Theory Chat Live. On this show, we chat, we come up with theories together, we break down trailers, we break down screenshots. We don't just put our faces up with a random background. We got professionally scheduled presentation. We're going to go through today's episode. We're going to go through all of the screenshots from the trailer. We've got, there was a developer video, and then there were screenshots that Capcom sent out, and then there were a few additional screenshots that Capcom had. There's pre-order information. There's collector's edition information. There is so much to cover today, and we are going to do that right now if you guys enjoy the stream be sure to click on the thumbs up uh best way to contact me is through twitter if you're not following me on twitter had hundreds of retweets and likes and stuff today because a lot of the stuff we're going to cover today i tweeted out and uh as always if you want to support the channel like steven did with the 499 super chat zill at jill is a zombie from re1 huh and Annette on Jill's map. We're going to talk about all that stuff. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can do donations. You can join the Zom Squad, and then you can use the cool emojis. We are on our way to 50,000 subscribers, so hopefully we get to that soon. And we'll just give people a couple more seconds to jump in. And then we'll get started. So I guess the first question I have, and, and the show is all about the chat. So... In emojis, in the chat, tell me what you felt like when uh, Resident Evil 3 was, uh, when you found out about it. We actually live streamed this morning, didn't think it was going to happen, it popped on the screen. I don't even remember what I did, I was just like staring at the screen. But uh, let's get some emojis in there to, to kind of gauge how happy you are. And I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of smiles and smiley faces. So, we've got, uh, G Steven says hype, Cruz has fire, a lot of fire, Gemini was popping bottles, Steve was just happy, a Rabbit Wolf says it was funny how they trolled everyone, so if you weren't here this morning, they had this show called State of Play, where they show you all the new PlayStation games that are going to come out, and what happened was... They went through all of them, and there was like a Final Fantasy VII one, which you think would be the end, and then all of a sudden it's like Project Resistance, and I'm just like looking like, oh, are you kidding me? They saved Project Resistance to the end, and then I'm like fooling around, and I'm like looking up, and I'm like, this doesn't look like Project Resistance, and then uh, Resident Evil 3 popped up, and uh, if you didn't know, Project Resistance, which is just called Resistance, is actually going to be like the mercenary mode for uh, RE3. So it's not even its own game, it's just uh, a mode that they were testing out. So that was pretty interesting uh, sleight of hand, if you will, for that. So, uh, be sure to tell all your friends about Where's Barry channel. We have all this cool stuff that we do. Uh, I've been gone for a while, and then I came back about, uh, what, two weeks ago? Wonder why I came back. Wink. And, uh... Yeah, so let's get started. Let's talk about these trailers and everything. Let's get the show on the road. As always, you can interact on social media. Facebook, Instagram, we're back on Instagram. Last week we weren't, now we're back. Instagram, we got videos, we got stuff. There was a social media only video today, so if you want to see the cool way I broke up the trailer into a story, you can watch that on Twitter or, f or Instagram. Uh, and we're Where's Barry B everywhere. And again, to support the channel monthly, you can join the Zom Squad, get emojis, hang out on Discord. So let's start by talking about Jill. Uh, I'm already over the complaining about Jill today. This is Jill from now on forever. 
I'm sure the lady who used to play Jill that's 34 years old is nice. But this is my Jill. This is my favorite Jill of all time already. So, we, we already talked a lot about this because a few days ago the screenshot of Jill leaked. So we actually, last episode of Theory Chat, we talked a lot about it. So we won't get into how she looks anymore because we are over that. Uh, this is one of the screenshots from the trailer. And it looks like it's Jill's apartment. And what's happening here, there's a voiceover on the bottom. Or not on the bottom, it's a voiceover. There's a voiceover that says, uh, I can't believe it's been every night is like this. So she's like up in her room. Uh, this is before Resident Evil 2, by the way. She's up in her room, looking out the window, and people are running down the streets. Things are on fire, and apparently she's just been up in her room watching out the window. You can see she has, like, a TV on, but she also has a lantern, so it's interesting. She looks like she's watching maybe the news or something like that. And this reminded me kind of of that thing where she's sitting on the bed, and she's like, September 27th, blah, 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 blah. And so I'm, I'm thinking maybe she's going to start the game in her apartment. It's funny, we did a joke. We were like, all you have to do as a joke or as a, a troll job is pretend you know some inside information. She's going to start in the apartment. Well, she might actually start in the apartment. Uh, Bill says, according to her bio on the website, she's been on house arrest. What does that mean? She's like... I'll have to look into that. I went to the website. So the websites were up for Resident Evil, the official ones. But I did not click. Uh, you can pre-order it right now on Best Buy and on the PlayStation Store. And on Best Buy, you can do Xbox or PlayStation. And on PlayStation Store, you can only do PlayStation. So that was about two hours ago. Uh, Sam said it could be house arrest post-mansion incident. So I guess maybe she would get in trouble, something like that. Uh, and I'm sure Umbrella has something to do with it. So if that's really what the thing says, I'll trust Bill because I never trust Bill. And I, I say, I don't believe you, Bill, until you tweet me. And then the last, like, three, he proved right. So I believe Bill. Uh, you, so after the man, let's kind of go back into that. So Resident Evil 1 happens a couple months before this. And the only people who know about it are the Stars members. So Umbrella wants to shut that down. They don't want anybody else to know about it. So I'm sure, and they have inside with the government and judges, and the whole town is bought, and everybody's corrupt. And so they would be able to do something like that with Jill. And again, this is pre-internet and everything, so something that could happen, possibly. A little hard to believe that she would stay there or whatever, especially after what she saw. But uh, they don't really need to explain it to have a good game, so... So what happens in the trailer is Jill, you see it first person. This is a, just a picture you can barely see. She's, it's a first person view and she's moving a bookcase. So Nemesis is chasing her. She's running down the hall in first person. So of course, when they released this this morning, I was like, no, it's in first person. But it appears that this is just a beginning cutscene. Uh, and again, I'm thinking that this is going to be the cutscene that happens when you start the game. She's in her apartment, there's a story, and then she hears a noise, and basically now it starts you out right away. And you're like, holy crap. Like the Resident Evil 7 started with like a 20 minute, like, I'm Mia. Oh, let's drive a car to the woods. And it was all slow and boring. This one might start off like, boom. Action right away, intensity, you're running. I, I don't know if it would be a cutscene, or maybe you actually play this beginning part in first person. And the only other thing I thought, here's another view of that, was that what if when every time Nemesis chases you, the game cuts into this first person chase mode. So in the original game you could fight him, but that was similar to what Mr. X was in Resident Evil 2 Remake, so you'd think they want to change up Mr. X from Nemesis. So what if they made a mini game where now every time he chases you, you're running away in first person. Uh, but it also, she trips and she does all this stuff, so it looks like it's just a cutscene. But that's just a thought about the Nemesis thing. I don't think that's going to happen, but that's just something that I would be was thinking. Loudy says that would be stupid. I, I agree. I don't really like that. I hated the alligator boss battle in Resident Evil 2 Remake. Um, and Box says developer confirmed it's over the shoulder. Yes, but what if there's little parts that aren't? They didn't say like every 24 hours, 7 days a week. 
I mean, I don't think there are little parts that aren't, but um, there's another cutscene later where Jill's first person, you see her put her hands in the sink. Again, it looks like a cutscene though. So that's kind of interesting that in Resident Evil 2 Remake, it was all movie cutscenes. Resident Evil 7 was all regular, like real-time cutscenes. So maybe they've combined those two different types of cutscenes in this where they'll cut you to first person and it'll look like you're in the engine video game and then it'll be like a rendered uh, movie. Um, in Resident Evil 7, you could not skip the real-time cutscenes that looked like this. And in Resident Evil 2 Remake, you could skip the cutscenes because they were just movies. So it'd be interesting if they incorporate that. Again, I think this is just the beginning of the game. And I think it'll only happen once. That where it looks like this or a cutscene like this. Uh, but you gotta be prepared for everything. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Chris says the first person is probably a dream cutscene Tomcat says doesn't think it'll be in the game at all like you mean first person or this scene here like this is oh you think this is yeah that's a good point too in Resident Evil 2 remake the game the trailer starts out with a first person view as well just like this and it's like it turns out it's a rat and obviously that that's not in the game so that is another good point And Ergie says it's probably the opening scene. Yeah, that's that's what I, I agree with. And again, so when as we go through this, we're just going to go off the top of our head. There's no wrong answers, even for me. And then, uh, like you guys, with your comments, we kind of figure out, okay, here's a bunch of answers. Here's some that are not likely at all. Here's some that are 5% uh, likely. And then you could, that's kind of how we figure out how, to, how the community kind of comes together to funnel in these ideas. So, and then just talking about that, uh, there was the rumor was Resident Evil 3 is coming out in 2020, like two weeks ago. And then all these fake rumors started popping up and whatever, bloom, bloom. Anyway, the evidence and the co community kind of filed it in and we figured out that they were going to announce it this morning. After the original people were like, it's at the Game Awards, it's this and that. And then like all the different things kind of coming together figured that out and by the way you'll see people's names popping up we're gonna thank you all at the end of the show all right so let's keep going here's this, here's jill so jill's taking a look in the mirror she's got a little necklace on and here's the other thing guys uh the things that we've seen today is not the final version of the game they've still got until april to touch it up and so what happens is they basically finished the game already i'm sure and then they go back in and kind of add some touches and some layers when they create these things there's different layers and stuff so if you watch the resident evil 2 announced trailer and you look at claire's face and then you watch the final game uh cut scene, same thing as the trailer her face looks way more realistic and better in the uh, final version so this could change a little it looks i think it looks really good the claire one looked a little weird uh, but she looks really good and then she's got, so the, why I say that is because she has that necklace that's like a, just a line. I don't know if they're going to change that necklace or if that means something. And then in the trailer at this point, she's looking in a mirror. Her eyes are like dead. She says her head hurts. She uh, feels sick or something like that. And she starts imagining herself or dreaming herself as a zombie. And somebody pointed this out on Twitter today. Look at, watch her shirt. What happens when she turns, when she's dreaming about being a zombie or whatever? She gets a different outfit on. Like, she loses her weird denim top. And now she's got a little tank top on. She's got all this stuff eating away at her. And maybe, you know, it might be her imagination or something like that. Chris says this is when she gets infected from Nemesis. Lottie says, I wonder if she's already infected before she meets Nemesis. That was So what I was thinking was this trailer was kind of showing us a lot of stuff in the beginning. As we mentioned, the Resident Evil 2, I don't know if we mentioned it, but the timeline is Resident Evil 3 happens, and then Jill 
gets knocked out. And then she's sleeping for two days, basically, when she's poisoned. And then Resident Evil 2 happens during that. And then Resident Evil 3 happens again at the end. Uh, it seemed like everything was in the first sections before that in the original game. But uh, who knows? And again, she might just be hallucinating because she's tired or something. This might not even be... She might not even been hit by Nemesis yet. And they might change a few things. So remember... We're going to go a lot off the original, and as the, we get to April, which is when the game is going to come out, we'll start to narrow it down and f find out what things might change and what things won't change. And here is the scene in the original game uh, that I was thinking this is about. Uh, Nemesis hits Jill that with her, his little claw thing, and it's poisoned. There was also a leaked screenshot that we did not see today that we showed you last episode and I thought it would assumed it would be in the trailer or come out today where you see that thing the scorpion thing get over here uh, hanging down in a picture that could have been a fake screenshot because I couldn't find the source of it but could be real too but that's the little tool thing that he has and then uh, she basically passes out and that's half that's Resident Evil 3 uh, the first day before Resident Evil 2 starts so she's sleeping for two days and we take over as Carlos in the original game at this point. And here's a couple more zombie shots. This is my, I mean, I love these shots. These are awesome. Like, these are my favorite screenshots probably ever. I just love black and white, hot zombie gel. <laughs> uh, and then... Uh, the, a bunch of screenshots also came out today along with the trailer, so we're going to splice those in. Here's one of them, and what we do when I get the screenshots is I zoom in, I zoom in, I look, what's this, what's that? For Resident Evil 7, I found something secret three months after the trailer came out. I found the policeman in the background. He was dead, killed by Jack Baker. Like, I found that, like, way after. It was, like, hidden in a screenshot. For RE2 Remake, I found a, c a picture of Claire and Leon meeting each other. It was, like, hidden. I had to invert the image, and it popped up. Uh, discover that maybe, like, three, four days later. So we're still going to look for different stuff. Uh, one of the things I always look up is the restaurants. So we've got a hotel. We've got Harps. There's a jazz club back there. There's Crazy. I don't know what that is. There's Bar Jackson. There's a movie theater. All sorts of stuff. And in the original Resident Evil 3, the game was awesome as a kid because she, uh, the character could go through a city. In Resident Evil 1, you're in a mansion. Resident Evil 2, there's a, uh, you know the beginning for you know five, six screens. You're outside, but you're mostly inside. And this was cool. It, and it, in Resident Evil 2, you could only go one way. There wasn't two different ways. In Resident Evil 3, they, it was an open world, but there were different ways. So you could go left, you could go right. That's basically it. And you could get lost. Uh, it, and in Resident Evil 2, if you're outside, it's just a straight path. So that's a pretty cool thing. And how open world is this going to be? So you're looking at it here again. And just think back to the original game. The streets are so narrow. It's so bizarre. It would never happen. Like, like There wouldn't be a city where the streets were that narrow. Uh, sometimes there's like an old town area where they closed down the streets. It used to be a street, but and the buildings were there, but it's but that was like 50 years ago, so they've turned it into a walkway or a busway or something. I don't know. And we don't know how open world this is going to be. Again, it doesn't look it. It looks like there's certain pathways to go just from the screenshots. Uh, by the way, welcome Demon, the moderator, and Scoob, part of the Zom squad. And um, if you guys keep the chat based on what pictures are up and stuff like that, I'll try to uh, read out some of your stuff. So every once in a while, I'm going to look over here. Samson says, RE3 was modeled after a Japanese city? I don't know. Uh, maybe. Are the cities like that in Japan? I, so I don't, I'm not uh, cultured. I don't know anything outside of where I live. Uh, linear? Yeah, Derek, that would be the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Rexy said, did I see the gameplay footage? We're going to go over some of that. Chowder says, the streets are very rural Japan. See, the thing about Raccoon City is this huge city. Uh, they give you the population in different games. It's a lot of people. It's a big one. And then they claim that the skyline is... Somebody claims it's based on 
either Toronto or on somewhere in Canada or Montreal or something. I don't know. I tried to figure that out uh, in the last game. And then uh, Gooley says, I hope it will be open world. It won't be open world, but I hope there will be a couple different ways to go. I guess just say it that way. Because even in Remake, you go outside in that area with the basketball court and the dogs, and it's just a linear path. The sewer had some different ways to go. Um, anyway, there's Jill staring at it. And look right here on her uh, shirt. That's her flashlight. So Leon was, wasn't was Leon in Resident Evil 2 Remake and Claire holding a flashlight all the time when they're shooting, which to me was the most bizarre thing. They wouldn't be holding that up the whole time. It's like every time it gets dark, they're like, Psh, and then they have a light, never runs out. And she, so she's got the light here. So maybe that means that light, it just, to me, it makes more sense. Also, just to go back in time to Resident Evil 7, uh, Clancy was the cameraman. And if you look at his shadow, he's not holding a camera in his shadow. His hands are by his side. So the camera was somehow strapped to his head or something. But it also ran off of VHS tapes, which made no sense at all. So maybe they kind of were fixing some of the issues they saw with the original one. Uh, what happened to her handgun? We're going to go over some of that. What if you could turn off your light so you can hide from nemesis chevy says that's that would be interesting technique uh we had to hide from irons in resident evil 2 remake we didn't have to turn a light off or anything but there might be new techniques and things like that in the game uh, that they're gonna test out and add here and austin says jill looks like she has some kind of ptsd her eyes are very weird in all the scenes she looks like she's like you said she looks kind of like she's dead there's this weird buzzing noise happening over in my left. So, this is what I decided to, you know, I zoom in, I do all this stuff. So here is what Jill has up on her. It's all your standard Resident Evil issued stuff. She's got her handgun, she's got her knife. Woo! She's got a uh, couple holsters, she's got, you know, hip packs, walkie-talkie. So she'll be communicating with somebody through that walkie-talkie, I'm guessing a shotgun uh, just your so far they've only showed the this basic stuff and you're gonna and she does have her badge on as well not sure what that's gonna do or when she put that on so hopefully we'll, we'll as the as the game developer uh, you know timeline moves on they show more trailers and stuff like that they will uh, unveil some of the new weapons and may, they won't even show all of them until we get to the game so It'll be interesting to see what kind of weapons there are. I didn't actually do the Resident Evil 3 original versus Resident Evil 3 remake, like, exact comparisons yet. But I don't remember all the weapons in Resident Evil 3. There was uh, shotgun, handgun, magnet, you know, your, your regular weapons. And then you could do enhanced ammo in that, but you could do enhanced ammo in 2 remake and 7. So I think that's already going to be in there. And what we talked about last episode was, are you going to have to combine the ammo using a tool like in the original game i doubt it but and then so just to give you a little close up on some of the extras in resident evil 2 remake you could find extensions to your weapons add-ons whatever they're called upgrades here you see jill she's got her extended uh magazine so she can hold more bullets in her handgun in this image and then here she's got her shotgun and it's got a stock on it i guess to, for more stability more aiming and that is probably an add-on. So there looks like there's going to be add-ons again. That's one of my favorite things about the screenshots that they give. They always have some kind of later in the game upgrade in one, in their screenshots before they release the game. So that's always something to look for if they come out with a new trailer. Look exactly at the weapon and see. And it looks like you're going to get upgrades once again. Um, in Re oh, so here's what happened in the original Resident Evil 3 to get the upgraded guns you had to kill Nemesis so you had to kill him twice to get the handgun and then twice to get the shotgun do you guys think that you'll have to fight Nemesis again in this to pick up items Mr. X didn't do that you just kind of slowed him down Nemesis might run away I don't know I don't, why would he run away But or do you think you have to take down Nemesis to pick up these uh extensions or whatever 
logically, in t 2019, it seems like you wouldn't kill Nemesis and then get a part. Like, you'd find one laying around. But, uh, this is also a video game. And they... It seems like they're really for this one. So, all week, I was telling you why I didn't think they they wanted to remake this game and all sorts of stuff about this game. And the fact that they did it, it looks like this one is, like, really even more for the fans of the series than the last one. So, I think that was interest. That's kind of interesting. That's... I don't know. I just get the feeling... It just feels like it's more for Resident Evil people than just everybody, and I felt like Remake 2 kind of shot for everybody, but that's just, I don't know, I just might be excited here. Uh, Colonel says maybe Nemesis will carry and use different weapons that you couldn't take from him. That would be one way to do it if he had the weapon. Uki said hope there's a reward for fighting. Developer said this would be more action-oriented. I don't know that I didn't... I didn't, I didn't actually read the, uh, I watched the developer stuff and I didn't read the captions today. <laughs> uh, Tomcat says running is going to be stressful. Steel says hope there's rewards for Nemesis drop. Uh, Dutchie says imagine Nemesis facing Mr. X, that would be cool. And we're gonna, oh, so I, I just released a video maybe two hours ago, something like that, so check that out. We're going to probably go over most of it here, but today it's it's all kind of screenshot based. But, uh, oh, actually, I do have it in here, so we'll, we'll get to that in a minute, actually. Gemini says, bet the Magnum is epic. Yeah, so Magnum, um, uh, grenade launcher, Jill has, uh, oh, there's a mine launcher in the original that I used to use all the time, and now I never pick up. And there was a machine gun that Carlos had, and I and it's in one of the screenshots, so that's back for him at least. And they gave one to her, I think, if you played it on easy mode or something like that. Uh, and then Demon says Jill is left-handed. Why is she holding the gun like that? In her right hand, again. Uh, okay. So this scene, this is, uh, look at all those zombies come at her. This, this is actual, it looks like gameplay because later in the trailer they show kind of the same scene and she's surrounded by like five zombies. In the original, in Resident Evil 2 remake, you there were times when what, four, four or five would come at you? Uh, maybe when you beat it and you're in B, in the beginning you're outside in the fire, there were like a bunch of them. But it looks like there's more of them closer together here. But again, this is, well, we'll have to kind of see what happens with that. And then uh, Bill says the RPD is in the background. Yeah, so this is implying that she's trying to get to the RPD, in my opinion. She sees the police station there. I'm guessing she starts off the game, whatever, in her house, Nemesis Chase or whatever. And her goal is probably to get to the RPD because she knows there's weapons there. Or, and also we learned in the Resident Evil 2 that... The RPD was a meeting place, so actually, there's a note, or there's either a note or Marvin says, I think it's a note that says, everybody come to the RPD. Oh, maybe it was in the, the intro or the trailer, they said, everyone's going to the RPD. And then when you get to the RPD, nobody's there. So maybe they, you know, they're there now. Uh, and it looks like there's some lights on up in there. So she's probably trying to get there, that's kind of like the meeting point that they've told her on the news or something like that. And we're in the original game, the RPD is in the original game. So the Resident Evil 2 and 3 both have the RPD, and you're going to see that again here. Uh, it'll be interesting to see the differences, and one of the issues people had was that Resident Evil 3 made the RPD slightly different than, our, than uh, the original. Not in terms of like the layout, but in terms of like what doors were boarded up. There's a great video from Carcinogen where he plays with the director of RE3 and they kind of go over all the misconceptions and stuff. So we I won't go over them here. I don't have like pictures of everything. But there there are ex fan explanations for why things are the way they are, but in reality they just kind of screwed up. So I'm hoping they don't screw up in this and there's more connections. And one of the things I didn't bring into this video that I wish I did was in Resident Evil 2 in the RPD there's a big hole in the wall. And we talked about how it was Nemesis, it was not Mr. X. And that might happen um, in the game here. Something that happens in this game, 
you see it in Resident Evil 2 Remake, even though Remake came out before. So that's where the confusion is. This comes out after, but it uh, takes place before, and are they going to connect? And if they were working on it at the same time, that's the best thing ever for us. Because it means they were coordinated, and they probably uh, mapped it all out the story out as one story so that it all connects together and Resident Evil 2 I felt lacked story and development and stuff like that and I've already seen here they're showing us Nemesis they're showing us stuff uh, so I'm, uh, I'm thinking maybe this is gonna kinda fill in the story and I'm really hoping that it all connects together by the way if you are just joining us we are going over the trailer we're going over the screenshots we're going over the pre-order we're going over everything that came out today there was so much information i've been working on it 12 straight hours uh be sure to click on the thumbs up if you want to support you can uh join the zomb squad leave a thumbs up just comment just chat and that would be amazing um and then here is the uh the dodge technique and Rick says this was made by a different team yeah I saw all that today so you don't when they didn't plan it all together they just were completely separate no communication or and then here's the gameplay and watch this so she ducks under and runs in Resident Evil 2 remake you could dodge zombies, especially on easy, but basically what would happen would they would try to grab you and if you like went to the right a little, they would miss, but they would touch you and push you and you'd just kind of stumble and then run. That's what that looked like to me. And then people said, go look at Revelations and how that works. And in Revelations, basically when the zombie goes like this, you press a button, which is forward, and then you do some kind of a dodge. That kind of, it does look like that. It's a faster dodge. In Resident Evil 2 Remake, there was uh, that dodge was more like a stumble, and this one is more like looks like she's running or whatever. So uh, it could be a dodge. Uh, very good chance that it, there's a dodge button. Uh, Resident Evil 3, the original one, was the first Resident Evil that added a dodge button, and it's kind of hard to do uh, for me. And some people can just walk through the whole game and dodge the whole time, so it's pretty crazy. But I stink. Uh, and then Levi says, what's the link for the developer video? It's all on the Resident Evil uh, official page. So they came out with the trailer, and then they added the uh, developer thing. It's got English subtitles. Uh, so you, you'll find all that stuff on the Resident Evil official. And then follow, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Where's Barry B if you want it, all the news. Whatever links, I'll, you know, new links come up, new articles. I'm always uh, you know, linking them. All right, so let's go back to the dodge. So what do you guys think about the dodge? Do you, do you think that is the dodge and there is a dodge button? The big question we had last week was, okay, Nemesis, and really, what was it, like four days ago? Nemesis has a rocket. Mr. X didn't have a rocket. You just run away from him and you're fine. Nemesis has a rocket. How do you dodge the rocket? Do you just run left, right, like you did in the original? Or might there be also a rocket dodge button? So if there is a dodge button for um, this, for zombies, maybe there's one kind of... You can use that same dodge for the rocket. That would be interesting. And then how many dodges do you get? Do you have infinite dodges? Is there a stamina meter where you get like one dodge and then you have to wait for your stamina to refill? We'll have to uh, kind of check out how that comes into play uh, the invasion show says that is 100% the dodge uh, Juan says slow motion dodge that would be interesting fallout has that slow motion thing which is really cool uh, kind of a matrixy thing I don't know that they would do that Uki says think it's the dodge and I like it uh, somebody said they hope for the best outcome chats moving quick now guys 427 people in here uh, Kendrick says Nemesis is going to be fast, so there has to be a dodge. Now, we played Resident Evil 3 the other day, and you can, there's a way where you stand there, and you just fire your gun, and then Nemesis, every he'll just miss, because you'll dodge every time, because he's on a pattern, and your fingers are on a pattern. So, uh, 
yeah, I hope it's more realistic if, if that's in there as well. All right, let's move on. Now we've got a shot here, and you can see over in that corner, let's make it a little bigger. You can see the machine gun thing that Carlos has. He's got a huge backpack on. That's like a Resident Evil 7 style backpack. He can hold a lot of stuff. And, and you see Jill has only two hip packs on. I don't know if she's going to, you know, how they're going to, how much inventory she's going to have. Uh, and how much, like, I can't remember, like, Leon could find these hip packs and maybe they wouldn't really bulk them up, so. But Carlos looks like he's got that huge backpack on there. I don't know anything about these machine guns, so you guys can, you guys told me last episode what kind of gun he had in the original. And, uh, so you guys can let the chat know what kind of gun it was. And then I'll repeat that. Uh, so this is the cable car. And they call it the train in the trailer. And I'm thinking po they possibly change. So there's also a train system in Raccoon City, a subway system in Resident Evil 6. I'm, I'm wondering if they changed it to a subway car instead of a cable car or whatever. I'm trying to look out that window over there. And it looks like maybe we're underground. But it also kind of looks like maybe we're not underground. Uh, but yeah, the layout of it... Well, I mean, it looks like a subway, but it also looks like the original cable car because all the seats were on the side in the original one. But I would think that would be one of the things they update. Uh, now, if it's a historic town, we were talking about how the streets are narrow and it might maybe it's like a historic town. That would maybe have some kind of a trolley or something that goes through it. I've been to a bunch of old towns in Virginia and Maryland. Uh, and even there's neighborhoods in D.C. now that have like a little trolley thing. So it's not that unrealistic, but I, I think they would try to switch it up. Uh, the the thing that I'm not seeing on there, I mean, it looks really like a lot like the subway there. Uh, and Demon says, Demon with the five dollar super chat again. I uh, greatly appreciate the support for this channel and all these dollars help the channel he says if you watch the preview again you can hear nemesis say stars i did hear him say stars and then i watched the trailer again and made a video and i couldn't find the stars part and i just left it out <clears throat> but yeah and it sounds just like the original stars it almost maybe it is the clip but i definitely heard it this morning when we watched the uh the reveal so here's uh mikhail right i really hope i didn't mix up the two guys i always mix up their name uh, Biohazard Kitty says, I heard the stars. I saw the stars. And uh, so Mikael is, he was like, is he a bad guy? Is he a good guy? And then so let me kind of explain. I, I just learned this like yesterday. Why these, like what's happening. So Resident Evil 1 happens. And there's a mansion, and Umbrella's a bad guy, and they're the worst, and oh my gosh, they're going to kill everyone. But the only people who know that are the stars people. Everyone in the world still thinks, oh, Umbrella, they're great. They save all these people with all their medicine, blah, blah, blah. So these guys t could go into the city thinking they're doing a good job. They're in the city. They're, they're called the Umbrella something or other. I can't remember what they called it in the original. But... They're coming in, in theory, to rescue people. Umbrella, you guys told me this. I didn't even know this. Uh, Umbrella is on the outside saying, oh my gosh, something crazy is happening in Raccoon City. We're not a part of it. We're actually going to save everyone from this. So they send in this team that they know is going to die. Like they send them in to die is just so the world can see, yeah, Umbrella's there to help. And so... That's why Carlos is actually a good guy. I used to call these guys bad guys. And then people are like, they're not bad guys. And I'm like, they are bad guys. They work for Umbrella. But I don't, Carlos doesn't know. He's like in the middle. And obviously the other guy knows. Uh, but he looks like he's been bitten on the arm. If you check out his arm there. That kind of looks like a scratch actually. But he was injured in the original game. I think we only saw him when he was injured, right? And then Steven with the $5 super chat says the Mercs are the PR stunt and have, but also have inside motives. Yeah, and I think Carlos doesn't have the motives that the others do. Although, if you watch the original, Carlos is, I don't know, he's kind of weird, but they, they don't know, they didn't know how to do like dialogue in the original and 
so some things come across weird. And then this is another scene, it's bizarre. She's like secretly watching him through a window. And maybe it's two train cars, although it kind of looks like she's in the train and he's out of the train. And again, we I looked at all these billboards and everything and nothing, I couldn't find any Easter eggs. I couldn't find any like connections. So you see that alien over there. It's, it's uh, and you see uh, the t-shirt company over there. Oh, something's on that shirt. There's a, actually a picture of a face. I'll have to zoom in and check that out later. But right on top of that where it says wear it, there's like a picture printed on that shirt. And speaking of Carlos, here he is. So he's uh, one of those umbrella people, as you can see by the patch. Again, he's got a flash. They've all got the lights attached to their thing, but he's got so many pockets, man. He can carry a lot. You can see his gun there once again. <coughs> so uh, it doesn't. It just looks like uh, I don't think it has any different attachments than the original gun we saw back here. Maybe it does. It looks a lot like the gun that Chris uses in uh, Not a Hero. Maybe it. No, I think they both have like a little sight on there. Uh, and then the look of Carlos, again, we talked about that the other day, but Daniel says, looks like a hobo. I mean, I don't know. People say that to me. I shaved my mustache like two days ago, though. Uh, he's got a little, um, you know, communication device in there. <laughs> he's got, he still has big muscles. <laughs> in the original game, he looked like a, like He-Man, like freaking Conan, like one of those, Conan? Conan. <laughs> like one of those freaking muscle wrestling type dudes uh, and they kind of brought him down a little but not that much because look at his arm right there man that's jacked I don't even I mean that's like seven of my arms uh, this is a screenshot that wasn't officially released it might have been in the trailer as well but it's on the website <coughs> and you'll see a bunch of stuff on here hold on let me cough <coughs> sorry while I'm coughing, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe and stuff. <sighs> What's up, Mr. Blue? Thanks for <coughs> saying that. All right, so back to this image. I'll even give you guys a bigger view on it. And what you what do you guys see here? You guys see the stars picture? I mean, they can't get enough of that stars picture. You see Annette Birkin up at the top, number five. You see somebody getting arrested by the cops. Uh, whoops. Down there at the bottom. I didn't really zoom in and see exactly who that was. There's some cells on the, on the left side and it gets blurrier. I, could, I zoomed in, I couldn't see anything. I'm hoping they, they usually come out with a 4K trailer and it makes it easier to zoom in on stuff. Today's trailer was not 4K for some reason. And they might come out with the 4K version later. Uh, Christian said that I look at the map. So that's something I haven't done. I looked at somebody else who looked at the map. And they said a few things were different. But I didn't do the comparison on my own. I just didn't have time to add that to the show here. So we'll, at, we'll hit that in the next episode. And in the Resident Evil 2 demo. There was... A bulletin board just like this kind of at the end of the demo with all these funny Easter eggs so I was trying to find the Easter eggs on this but I think these are kind of the things you're gonna see up on the walls everywhere Resident Evil 7 Resident Evil 2 reused all the assets and pictures and they're all over the wall just to kind of fill up space <coughs> so maybe some of these actually have Easter eggs and maybe some of them are just generic uh, background stuff uh, the Resident Evil channel has a trailer in 4K. Uh, then maybe I... Yeah, I'll have to figure out how to get that. Because this morning when I got it, it wouldn't let me do that. Uh, and then there's a light switch over there with the green light. Not sure what that is. And I can't see the picture in the middle there. It looks like something circled in the newspaper. Luden says, are we going to have a demo? That's a good question. I, I don't... No? I mean, maybe. I guess Resident Evil 7 and 2 had a demo. So sure, why not? Yeah, 
And again, I'll have to review some of the stuff. Did the, the, the RE2 demo came out like two weeks before? Um, so this next screenshot is on the Resident Evil official website. It wasn't in their package of screenshots. <laughs> and it, it shows you these citizens running away. And one of the things I noticed in the trailer is there, you might be walking around and there might be people running past you. Again, this is before Resident Evil 2. So in Resident Evil 2, everybody's dead or gone or hiding. This is the start of it here. So there's still a lot of people alive that aren't zombies yet. And you see them running around. And even in one place where it looks like there's gameplay, it looked like there was guys possibly out there. But uh, you won't be able to, like, you wouldn't be able to interact or anything, I don't think. So maybe they'll all run past you. And then, yeah, so I'm trying to figure out, like, what are the connections? Toy Uncle is the name of the toy store. Uh, there's Sigourney's is up there. I was trying to find, what is that a connection to? A big, what's that one up there? It says, like, big, big wards or something. Uh, but, yeah, 200, uh, 200, why did I say that? Uh, toy Uncle, I, I was like trying to think of like what kind of pun is that for Resident Evil but I couldn't figure that out uh, and it's cool there's actually a whoops I'm in the wrong spot again there's actually a phone booth over there so uh, one of the old school uh, pay phones phone booth uh, in the background there so that's cool where there w there was a f I feel like there was a phone booth in Resident Evil 2 in the beginning might be wrong on that uh, Daniel says Jill running from her ex. Hey, -o. hey, -o. Derek says Sigourney Weaver. And I was trying to do that connection because um, Resident Evil uh, Two Remake Sherry, her part was kind of an homage or homage to Aliens. There's a little girl in Aliens, and Sherry's a little girl, and they both hide. And it's uh, there were a couple almost shot for shot things uh, so I'm trying to see like if there's some kind of alien connection again and then the so the trailer today you like I didn't even realize this because I was again I thought it was resistance so I was ignoring it uh, but it actually starts out by recapping Resident Evil 2 remake and this was kind of a different... It shows you different camera angles of things that happened, and this was kind of my favorite one. This is an unfinished road here, and it's Leon and Ada. So in the trailer for RE3, you actually see a all the characters from RE2 walking through Raccoon City, and it's going to get you in the mood like, okay, we're in the same city, all this stuff. Uh, how many areas are going to be the same? What do you guys think on that? Are they going to utilize the entire Raccoon City map from the original and add a few areas? Are they going to make all Resident Evil 3 areas and then utilize a few RE2 areas? How do you think they're going to do that? In Resident Evil 3, you've got uh, the city streets, which they kind of add it. And they look different over uh, in the RE3 trailer. Um, you've got this clock tower church thing. That we haven't seen yet. You've got uh, that bridge that Nemesis jumps off. You've got a park, uh, and you've got uh, you know so uh, diff a lot of different places in RE2. The only one that's the same are basically the streets and the RPD. But uh, now that they've got this big world, and we'll see later, or actually, did we already see it? Yeah, Jill. I don't think we talked about it. Jill is in the sewers here, and this looks like the same sewers from the Resident Evil 2. And then they didn't show any clips of them in the RPD yet, but they did show one of them going to the RPD and talking about going to the RPD. And we saw Jill headed to the RPD, so we know that's going to be in there again. All right, so who are these guys? I didn't know because if you guys follow this channel, I played Resident Evil 3. I beat it like nine times in the last three weeks, and I still had no idea who these people were because, I don't know, it just kind of goes past me in the cutscenes and everything but this is who is this can't remember it's a weird name Murphy so this is Murphy Murphy uh, Jill in the trailer Jill finds Murphy 
Murphy's on the ground. He looks like he's injured. He looks like he's going to be a zombie. And he's, of course, saying the classic thing everybody says. I'm not infected. I'm not a zombie. Whatever. And then guess what happens five seconds later? Oh, well, this is what he looked like in the original. Oh. This is what... This slide's supposed to be back there. Anyway, this is five seconds later. So Nikolai comes down the stairs and shoots him and... I mean, that's implied by the, the way the trailer was. So Jill's probably like, oh, I'll save you. You're not infected. And he just comes down and takes her takes him out. So this is what he looks like in the original. And how Resident Evil 3 original worked was there was... Remember, there were choose-your-own-adventure things. So it would be like a white screen would flash and it'd say, do you want to jump out the window or do you want to fight Nemesis or whatever? There were also choose-your-own-adventures that weren't selections it was based on what you did in the game so if you go to the restaurant f before you go to the newspaper then Nikolai actually kills him and you don't even see it and Nikolai's like he was a zombie and you don't really believe him because he's a bad guy if you go to the newspaper first and then the restaurant then when you get here, Carlos comes up to him, and he and this guy's like, kill me, I'm turning into a zombie, and Carlos is like, no, I'm not going to do that, and he's like, do it, I'm turning into a zombie right now, and then Carlos closes his eyes and uh, takes him out. So two different things can happen. There's, a, there's several different cutscenes that can happen in different places, several different things that happen in different places. That's the big question I have. Are there going to be those moments where if you go here first, you're not going to see a certain cutscene. If you go there, you're not going to see it. The cutscene's going to be there. It's going to be somewhere else. And is that how they're going to get replayability out of it? Because Resident Evil 2 had four scenarios, but the bosses were all the same. It was some different stuff. Don't know how much that was replayability. If they consider the choose your own adventure stuff as replayability, does that mean they're going to keep the game short? And that's going to be the replay, or are they going to still add everything? Uh, these are just some... Uh, I mean, these are questions too big to answer at this moment. And by the way, if you guys are enjoying the stream, don't forget to click on the thumbs up. This is the RPD. I'm Where's Barry. Follow me on Twitter, Where's Barry B, if you want the most Resident Evil news ever. And screenshots and Photoshop and zoom ins and stuff like that and follow the channel and subscribe because we're gonna do so many videos and our videos are fun and not boring and I spent what I spend seven eight nine hours working on the video today and I don't know if other people are doing that on their videos but I'm doing that on mine because I want the videos to be a little bit silly here's the other guy Tyrell is the other guy's name and again, you guys all told me this on Twitter. Uh, and then once I saw, I remember him. But So he's here with, uh, with Carlos. So Carlos and him are headed to the RPD right here in this scene. They're trying to find the STARS room. We know that because the, there's a voiceover and he says the STARS office is close. So for some reason, these people are going specific, not just to the RPD. They're going to the STARS office. So I don't know if the stars sent out a signal and said we're all going to meet at the office or what. But I don't know why they're going there. Uh, what is in that room in Resident Evil 2? There's some, there's an armory and some other stuff. Maybe they're going to get more guns, something like that. Kevin with the $2 super chat. Uh, so the question I have here is if you play the game... Of, so earlier we saw... You play the game as Carlos in the original. Do you guys think that there's going to be a Carlos scenario and a Jill scenario? Or do you think it's going to be like uh, Resident Evil 2 where you're Leon and then Ada plays for a few minutes and then you're Leon again? I, I think it's going to be more like that where he's... I was hoping they would make two scenarios and spread it out and make it big and... But I'm feeling like they're probably not going to do that. And they're going to make him more of a side character still. And have like three main ones. Claire has her day in Resident Evil. Leon has his day. And Jill has her day. And th these other side people are just like a part of that. But there's like three main stories kind of. 
Uh, what else was I going to say about Carlos? Oh, yeah. So when you play the game as Carlos in the original, you're going to get the antidote to save Jill. So you go to the hospital. We don't see the hospital in this. We see them going to the RPD. Do you think they changed the antidote into the stars room? I don't think so. I, so I'm thinking you're going to play as Carlos more than once, basically. So what, with Ada, you played as her once. And with Sherry, I think you played as her once in the middle or whatever. I think with Carlos, he's not going to get his own scenario. But you're going to play as him more than one time. Uh, and that's just thinking about him at the RPD. And then I think he's going to have to go to the hospital later. I don't think they're going to change that portion of the game. And then... Uh, if you're Carlos, is this guy going to be like your wingman? Like, so in Resident Evil 2 Remake, sometimes Ada would walk by herself and not a cutscene with you. I don't think you ever fought together or anything. So if an enemy showed up, they wouldn't shoot. They would just kind of walk and talk when the characters were together. So maybe they'll do a walk and talk. But, I mean, these are the, the mercenaries. So I'm wondering if he'll be able to help you in a battle or something like that. What's up, Venom Vlog? And let's go to the chant here. So what do you guys think about the uh, the other mercenaries? Do you think they'd be able to help out in a battle, or do you think it's just going to be just classic uh, cut scenes and chatting, and then Carlos does all the work? Uh, and Armand says, all the Foxy ladies love my accent. So I was doing a lot of watching of Carlos today. He has these weird lines that about girls so you know they're gonna eliminate that in 2019 you're not allowed to say things like foxy that's insulting even though it's a compliment and they're gonna take out all the classic lines again i'm sure resident evil 1 they took they took out the classic jill sandwich line and a bunch of others resident evil 2 they took out all the classic kendo stuff and they really hate that we th that americans think that the dialogue is cheesy the people who make the game they don't like it, and they mentioned it during the RE2 coming out. They were talking about how RE1, I watched some video. They didn't like that people think the lines were cheesy in RE1, so they're going to remove them, and then they're going to accidentally put in lines that are worse, which is what they always do. I can't remember the one from Resident Evil 2. There was a really, really stupid line that I was like, oh my gosh. She is a, she's a real humdinger. Sorry about that, babe. Yeah, all those key lines. Uh, dark guy who's probably going to get banned for the name says uh, they're looking for a radio in the star's office. Uh, oh, yeah, so in the star's office, there is that big radio thing on the side. Was that in Resident Evil 2 Remake, too? Uh, Juan says Carlos is going to cut his hair during the game. <laughs> And Kenji said, mentions Marvin. We're gonna we're gonna hit that up at some point. All right. So this, so by the way, look at his eyes in the glasses. They're kind of like, you know, up in the up in the air, like George Clooney. And then in that's because in the old game, his eyes were like up here. And he's got the glasses. He can barely see. He's like blind. He's blind in one eye. And so. Yeah, so this is Tyrell. Again, he has two different scenarios that could happen depending on what you do in the original. <clears throat> in one of them, if you go... If you go downstairs first, and then you go upstairs, you'll come in here and he'll try to shoot you, and then he'll be like, oh, you're my friend, but I, you're probably a traitor because Nikolai shot him. And then he opens the safe and whoops, and then he blows up. The other option is if you go downstairs first, when you get up there... Nikolai has shot him so I guess he gets shot by Nikolai in both scenarios and blows up in both because in the second scenario he pulls out a grenade and blows himself up uh, because he knows he's gonna die and he's trying to kill Nikolai so he is gonna blow up again I'm sure uh, Steven with the two dollars forgot my parka oh uh, that was it he's like in the in the freezer Leon is, and he says, It's good, it's cold in here. I forgot my parka. I think that was Leon, right? Anyway. And then this is the new uh, bad guy. Uh, he's not new, but this is what he looks like now. So pretty scary looking. Pretty evil looking. 
the smile he's got here. What are you guys thinking? What is he looking at? I think he's... Oh, so there's actually another thing where he's on a TV. So I think he's actually maybe looking at a camera and he's broadcasting. Because the green light. Because the TV's all green and blue and stuff. Oh, Claire said the parka. Oh, yeah. Leon... I think the free... Which one was funnier? The freezer open. They were both stupid. Uh, Steel Force says, looking through Nemesis files. Anthony says he's definitely plotting. Uh, Bill says hopefully Nemesis rips his face off. Nemesis rips his face off? I shot him in a helicopter. And when I didn't, he escaped, right? And then this, we already saw this. This was earlier when he shot, uh, spent, I don't know, the white dude. I don't know what his name is. All right, so now everyone's favorite part, it's B-Rad. So what are your guys' initial impressions on Brad? Let's kind of go over a quick, let's go over a quick history on Brad Vickers. So Brad is the helicopter pilot in Resident Evil 1. They get on the ground, they go out, oh my gosh, evil dogs, and Brad's like, see ya, and he freaking leaves them behind in the helicopter. And I don't know, who knows where he goes, maybe there's some canon storylines that aren't in the game that tell you, but... So he flies away, and then at the end he comes back and saves him. But I'm sure they hate him. And his nickname is Chicken S or Chicken Head or something like that. So now he's back in Raccoon City here, and what he does is he, him and Jill meet up probably again in the beginning. So Nemesis is chasing Jill in the trailer. Of, uh, she jumps, she flips out the window, uh, and then he might go, Hey, Jill, come here. And that might be kind of the entire beginning of the game. And he's got that ugly yellow vest on. Look at him. He's like, oh. I mean, look at this doofus. They really did make him look like kind of like a doofus. Uh, Fom says chicken heart. Okay. Yeah, chicken head is better. <laughs> I'm going to call him chicken head. So here he is doing a singing in the rain dance. Good morning. Good morning. Um... And then in th this is the part in the trailer where he's, he knows that Nemesis is coming after the Stars members. And he knows they're coming after both of them. And he's freaking out. He's like, he basically looks like he's about to like give Jill to Nemesis so he could like run and hide. Because he's a little chicken head. And uh, he says that Nemesis is coming after us because we're stars. We're the only two stars here. And that means Brad has encountered Nemesis before as well. So Jill, we think, is going to uh, encounter Nemesis right before they meet. And how does he know he's only going after him? Nemesis is saying, stars. So that's probably how Brad knows. And maybe Brad was running and Nemesis was only chasing him or something. I don't know how he escaped, especially when he was flapping his wings like this to try to get away from Nemesis. But somehow he escaped. And I don't know if he was on a boat or if that's just some kind of style that he likes. Uh, and here's Brad from the original game. And in the original game, Brad gets faced by Nemesis. So, when you go into the RPD, what's up, Residents of Evil? Remake hype for sure. So when uh, he goes into the... Uh, when Jill goes into the RPD and comes out, uh, the body is gone. It's like, oh, where's Brad? Well, he's somehow walked under the steps. He's turned into a zombie. And that's in Resident Evil 2. So let's go to Resident Evil Remake. We go into the basement. We want to see that Brad zombie. And he's not there. And Capcom has a little Easter egg. They think it's funny. This, the developers probably think this. The, the, num <laughs> the number one thing that the uh, people who created the game liked was that they made a bathroom in the RPD. I think this is their second favorite thing. So when you say Brad's not under the police station stairs anymore, they go, yes, he is. Ha ha. But look at the uh, picture of Brad. This is from Resident Evil 2 Remake. That's the same guy. That's him. It's the same uh, model guy. So that's just another clue. So that was one of the actual early, early clues when that was discovered. It was actually discovered in the demo by breaking the demo and going through the walls or whatever. And people were like, that looks like a real guy. I bet they're scanning all the people in for Resident Evil 3. And I was like, no, they're going to remake Resident Evil 4. 
Uh, but that was like the first clue there that they were actually working on both games at the same time. Anyway, so he's not in this game. So why isn't he... What, where's the zombie? Come on. And actually in the demo, if you break the demo and go down there, you can hear Brad going, rawr, rawr, but you can't see him. And they imply he's in one of the lockers, sort of. I guess that was like a an Easter egg they were thinking about putting in because it was not in the real game. It's only in the demo. And it's only if you know how to break the walls or whatever. Break the wall down! So why isn't Brad Zombie in Resident Evil 2? Well, I'll tell you why he's not. This scene from the trailer. There's Jill. She's on top of the parking garage. Brad is in his chopper because he's a flyer. And he's about to take off. And Jill's like, we're going to escape. Yay, we're on top of the parking garage. Uh-oh. Nemesis pr showed up. Nemesis took down the chopper. And I saw on Reddit today, people were like, it's the same helicopter. It, first of all, this is the day before Resident Evil 2, or two days before Resident Evil 2, so that's one thing. Second, he's 10 feet off the ground on top of the parking garage. The other helicopter, he wouldn't fall on the RPD. <coughs> I don't think. And then they said, well, the serial numbers on the helicopter, whatever, the chopper numbers are the same. Uh, the, all the cops in the RPD are wearing Marvin's name tag in RE2. Are they all Marvin? I think it's just uh, they use the similar, the same helicopter, you know, program or whatever. Uh, someone's, so I saw their post on Reddit and the, they were circling the numbers. I, I didn't even think the numbers matched and the helicopters didn't look the same. Uh, and my thought is Resident Evil 2 Remake, there's a helicopter that drops all the Mr. X's down. So I'm assuming that's the one that crashed. And I'm also assuming Nemesis shot it down. Uh, Nemesis shoots this chopper down. In the original game, Nemesis shoots another helicopter down. Uh, when you beat Nemesis, Jill like runs out. S oh no! Before you beat Nemesis, so when you beat the clock tower and you start the gears and the bell starts going off, Jill goes outside and a helicopter's coming. She's like, "Over here, the game is finally over. We're all saved." And then Nemesis blows up that helicopter. So he he's shooting at any helicopter in the air. He's gonna shoot down. Sh I bet he shoots down three, four, or five helicopters. Oh, that's what helicopter it is. So in Resident Evil 2 Remake, the helicopter's probably the one from the church. I don't know. Or the Mr. X one. Whatever. Anyway. So let's actually go back. Back, 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 back. Oh, oh, there it is. So, so, and then I say that and then, but look at the, so there's the RPD. Look what's next to it. The parking garage is next to it. <laughs> so maybe, I don't know. The other thing you have to think about is the timeline could be changed. So they don't have to follow the original timeline. They could change it to where this is happening at the same time, on the same day. Maybe this all takes place in one day now. Uh, all the cannon heads, those people are like, oh, it's cannon, oh, cannon. Anytime you say anything, they're like, cannon, cannon. Uh, they're going to get really mad if they change anything. <clears throat> Le Claire A, Leon B, Claire A, Leon B. Like they scream that like in their sleep at night. <coughs> but when you played Resident Evil 2 Remake, it's clear it's not Claire A, Leon B. It's different combinations of different things that they've kind of switched or a couple things at least. So things can change in these remakes and they always often do. Um, Spectral says, if the story isn't broke, don't fix it. I, I don't know about you, but I feel like the story is super broke. It's broke like me. Before I got three super chats. Um, most people don't even know that Resident Evil 3 takes place before and after Resident Evil 2. I don't even, didn't even know that until I started this channel and met all the, the like, people who are uh, historians and experts on the game. Now, in the original game, in the beginning, she says, does, and I'm going to get the date wrong, is it September, it's either 28 or 29, September 28, 29, whatever. She's sitting on her bed. Then when you beat Nemesis, and then she wakes up, she says, October 1st. So she actually does tell you it's a different day. I've been sleeping for two days, blah, blah, blah. She doesn't, I don't think she says exactly that, but. Uh, so the game does, the original game does tell you that it's two different days, but if you're just playing the game and having fun, like, you're not paying attention to what, freaking calendar is come on 
September 28th, daylight. And then she says October 1st in the second half of the game. And Resident Evil 2 takes place on the 29th. So it's the next day. And again, the timeline can change because this is a remake. Remake! Three remake. Boom, Hunters. What do you guys think about Hunters? In Resident Evil 2 Remake, there was a limited amount of enemies and bosses because they've all fought the same boss. And they got rid of the crows. They got rid of the spiders. Hunters weren't really in it. They might have been in one version, like one room in one version. But they weren't in Resident Evil 2, so they're in here. And it was funny. Somebody on Twitter was like, that's not a hunter. And I'm like... It's a f green, scaly thing that looks like a gremlin with claws. And look on the ground right there. They don't show it, but that is de a decapitated head. And you can see the blood behind there that squirted out the neck. And uh, that hunter definitely took out the neck of the, or the head of that. And they just took it out. They didn't want a gory screenshot. That's definitely a hunter, right? I don't want to... Oh, no. Blue Brain Dumber says it's not a hunter. Why would they show the other thing? Oh man, am I... I think it's a hunter, man. He's got the claws. Like, doesn't a hunter have claws like that? <coughs> anyway, so what enemies do you... What other enemies do you want to see in the game? Uh, crows were in it. Dogs were in it. <coughs> so crows and spiders. Those were the two that were in Resident Evil 2 that... They didn't bring back for the remake. Are we going to see the crows and spiders in this one? <coughs> and then what enemy in this? Oh, yeah. There's these things that run around. <coughs> like, ah. This, they look like crickets. And they're annoying. And they hug you. <coughs> so th that's the other enemy. And what happens in Resident Evil 3 is... Uh, and Rick says that's the beta hunter. So what happens in the original Resident Evil 3? Hold on, I got a cough again. This is killing me. <coughs> By the way, if you guys enjoy the stream, make sure you click on the thumbs up. If you want to hang out in the Zom Squad, make sure you click join as a member. Uh, the Brain Sucker. So what happens in Resident Evil 3 is... If you kill too many enemies, the ne the enemies later in the game mutate into special uh, secondary enemies. So the strategy that you're supposed to do in Resident Evil 3, the original, is when you see those cricket things, that's, the, that's what I'll call them the, with no words, you don't kill them. Because if you kill them later, they're going to be even faster and stronger. So I never... You never do that. And the hunters, I believe, also turn from the the regular green hunter to the red hunter. Although they might also be red hunter. They, I, they actually might be separate. But the cricket things, they don't mutate farther. Oh, and if you kill too many of them, the spiders later in the game will turn into those crickets. There's different things if you kill too many enemies that will... They basically try to make the game harder because they think you're good because you killed the enemies. So really, you have to... Uh, just not kill them when you're playing RE3. And I'm, I consider myself an expert RE2, but I can't do 3. We, I tried it again the other day and died. But I have beaten it once without saving it. And I know the strategy. I just have to get good at it. Alright, let's go to the chat here. Uh, Juan says uh, Crimson Heads. Um... Dark dude said there's a corp with a lab coat. Uh, could be the that could be in the hospital. Oh, that's a good point. That kind of look looks like a hospital. I guess you could kind of see a lab coat. And in the hospital is where you actually run into these hunters with Carlos in the original one, right? That's probably the first time you see a hunter. So this might be from the Carlos section. Although later in the game I. I think Jill probably runs into them. Oh, yeah, she definitely does because they're in the park, too, living in the water. Uh, Christian says, what about the giant worm? So bosses, that's another thing we can talk about now. What kind of bosses are we going to see? If we only have one character, 
then we're not going to have that problem where every character fights the same boss over and over again. Um, so what are they going to bring? They're, they're going to have to do a different boss, right? And then so the other thing we got is Nemesis, right? Nemesis, unfortunately, my least favorite part about these games is these things mutate bigger and stronger and then all of a sudden they can fly. It's like it makes no sense. I, nemesis himself should never even mutate. He shouldn't start growing new things. He should just be the big strong nemesis. But they always do. They always mutate, whatever. So Nemesis is going to be coming. And in this one, if maybe you can kill him and then he comes back as another thing, he might be some of the bosses. Um, there were more bosses. <laughs> were there more bosses in RE3 than 2? I think so. Uh, you got the worm a couple different times. You, fate, uh, you run into him. Uh, nemesis. You fight him a couple times that you have to fight him twice. The final boss of the game. Uh, and then Steven says, where is Umbrella sending Nemesis off from? We're going to go over that too here. This is a long episode, but we're going to be thorough. We're going to go through all the screenshots, all the trailer stuff, and I'm going to get all these great ideas from you guys so that we can make videos for the next two weeks. Uh, Dragon Girl is asking about ammo. Uh, yeah, we already talked about weapons, so we can still talk about that. Uh, yeah, I think they'll have freeze rounds. They had acid rounds in RE2, right? You had to, like... See, I'm so... It's been seven months I tried to forget RE2 because every time I closed my eyes, I, uh, I saw, like, freaking Leon, the back of Leon's head. That sounds weird. Uh, Dario, yeah, we talked about the other characters in the game that we haven't seen. Uh, we haven't seen Dario, and uh, that's it, right? Uh, the water puzzle, the choices, all the stuff. All right, let's just get through this first. Save those questions for the end. Try to end. Uh, now we're going to talk about Nemesis. So in the chat, talk about Nemesis so I can read them, read some cool chats. This is Nemesis here. Uh, this is what I figured was him coming to attack Jill. So in the original game, Nemesis fights Jill in a battle you have to fight. And he comes flying out of the fire of a crashed cable car. <clears throat> so it looked a lot like this. So I'm thinking that's where it is. The thing I'm, that comes to my mind here is you see that, see that metal thing. Is that his rocket launcher? I feel like it's part of his body, like it's, he's got like a big metal fist or something. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is there's caution tape on him still, or caution stickers, which is kind of interesting. And the uh, advertising for the original Resident Evil 3 featured a lot of caution tape as kind of their uh, their gimmick. So that might be just like kind of like an Easter egg back to the, the old days. Because uh, we're going to see how Nemesis was made, and I don't know why he'd have caution stickers on him. <laughs> and welcome Andrew and everybody else. Speed, Super Speed Show, King Meister, Rain Zone, Zorp, <clears throat> Knock, Christopher Promises, Player, Domers, and everybody else who's subscribing. If you subscribe, you get the emails for the videos. And uh, the channel is two different parts. We do... <clears throat> We play games at night, and then I delete those videos, and then uh, we keep all the good videos. And I'll make a video this morning, I made, or this afternoon, made a video just about all this stuff. And my I don't want my videos to be more than three minutes, four minutes. So I cram it all in, give you the good, juicy stuff. And then we do these shows, and then we talk about it for an hour. And we get into the, all the details. All this stuff I wanted to say in my video, but I don't want to make an hour-long like video, so... All right, so Nemesis. They show us kind of a background on Nemesis. So let's go over what the scenes are first, and then I'll, I'll tell you about the timeline that somebody told me about. So this is a hot, uh, some kind of umbrella facility, restricted access. You see a table there. You see they're working on him, and he's got that big thing around his neck, that motor. Or I don't know if it helps him breathe, what it does, or maybe that's the thing I saw in that picture. <clears throat> but so they're working on him and you, look it looks like a human somebody said there's like a comic it doesn't count as part of the story where they made a bot they turned a boxer into nemesis so 
Again, they can change kind of how Nemesis was created because in the games they didn't really say much about it. So is this like a real human that they've turned into him? Because why are they injecting him, you know? <clears throat> Seems like that would be kind of like an Incredible Hulk type of thing. And then what I was told was that in the canon storyline for Resident Evil, Nemesis was created before Resident Evil 1. So this could be happening like months ago. I feel like they're implying that Nemesis is being created like right at the same time. But he said that Nemesis was created before. So maybe this shot in brings him to life. Like they've been storing him away. Caution, stay away. He's been like in a warehouse like the Raiders of the Last Ark. And now they're bringing him out to use him. And they ha inject him to bring him to life. Because after they inject him, <coughs> his arm moves. So I think this injection here, he's like a been put to sleep or comatose or whatever and i think this injection actually wakes him up brings him to life and they've got him chained up and now his fist moves <coughs> and his eyes open his ugly eyes and his nose is sideways and everybody hates that don't know why i think it's just they don't like they, you can't look at somebody and their face is sideways and you're like it just hurts your mind <coughs> but it makes sense he's a freaking freak of nature and it would actually fit the boxer idea really good too So they wake up Nemesis, whatever, then they put him in this capsule thing over there in that corner. It's like a giant coffin, and look how big it is. It's like the size of like four coffins. And then they've got this uh, awesome chopper, this Umbrella Corporation chopper. And then they're, it looks like they're picking him up. You can see a arena, a basketball arena. So it looks like they're somewhere in Raccoon City, you know, <clears throat> I would guess. Uh, a lot of traffic, stuff like that. Maybe they're in a different city, but... Raccoon City gets bigger and bigger every time they come out with a new game. And then you see they're loading them up in the transport plane here. And it's just like <laughs> it's just so funny that it says cartridge for bioweapon. Like it's basically labeled, you know, we're terrorists. Uh, and then there's numbers on there. 0211-01-1231-236-A910. I haven't researched that number. I haven't tried to find any Easter eggs in that number. I encourage everybody to try to find some kind of connection with those numbers. Because uh, they usually put these numbers in for certain reasons. But also there's a clock in the trailer. And it's at different times. And it doesn't go up and down sequentially. And that's another thing I was trying to find a pattern in. Um, and then it says... Um, Codename Nemesis. So, so yeah, they might be, uh, they might have had him in a warehouse just as a body. They inject him, bring him to life, they shove him in this thing so he can't get out, and then they fly him in the helicopter and drop him out the, the helicopter. They don't like drop him on the ground and open it because then he'll kill them. So they just drop it down, and you can see in the screenshot, it's landed right there. Uh, 98 Demon $5 says Nemesis is originally a Mr. X with a parasite. Oh, somebody said in the comments. Okay. Yeah, and that's the thing. People were telling me stuff like that, and uh, I was saying, oh, well, they could change that, and they should, could give us a real origin story. and they Or they can tell us that in there, but... <laughs> he does look really a lot like Mr. X in the beginning, and I think they did that kind of on purpose to trick us in the trailer to think it was Project Resistance because it looks like I, I think they even used the Mr. actual Mr. X on that uh, the shadow of Mr. X and it wasn't Nemesis but I don't know maybe not so yeah so it's, they've dropped it and it's landed in the cinema and then it looks like Nemesis probably just punched it open or something um, and he's right downtown you know they dropped him right downtown there Again, there's some movie posters about disaster and vacation and uh, the motel and everything. And I I've tried to find secrets in that. I couldn't find anything. <laughs> and then, I don't know why this is in the middle. But Resident Evil Resistance is a uh, part of the... Uh, instead of mercenary modes, the original game had mercenary modes. Now the bonus round is probably this. It's free. It's included. It's part of the RE3 DLC. Uh, I, I had a... I knew it was going to be a DLC. I mean, there was no question about that. But I thought it would actually be for Resident Evil 2. Alright, so let's talk about 
Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 and how they connect to each other. Uh, as I said, Resident Evil 3 starts on September 28th, I think. And Jill's on re- there. Jill comes into the RPD first. So she's there before Leon and Claire are there. And Marvin is there. So the same character is in both games. I think Marvin might be the only one. Do you th- So do you think we're going to see Marvin in Resident Evil 3? I think that is very, very certainty. Like, that's almost near certainty. And then... Are any of the other characters going to interact from the different games? Or are they going to keep them separate? One of my issues with Resident Evil 2 Remake was they made no connections to Resident Evil 3. And no additions to the story or anything like that. (laughs) But maybe they're saving it for 3 to connect back to 2. I actually don't think that would happen. I think Marvin will be the only one. But they're all in this town at the same time between 28th and the October 2nd or whatever they're all in this town and maybe in the original one they were kind of at different times but for the new version they could all be there kind of at the same time so Marvin and then here's the here's what the director of Resident Evil 3's official stance is on Marvin he says when Jill finds Marvin here even though he looks dead he's actually alive that's what the director said. And then I said, uh, the guy asked him, he said, well, how do you know that? And then the director goes, <laughs> like he made some face. Like he didn't know it, he just made it up. But because he said it, and he's the director, that I, it's official. Even though he didn't believe it himself, it's official, Marvin's alive here. My theory slash I know what happened, Mar- they messed up. They said Marvin was dead, but... The, guy, the director read all the fan theories about why Marvin could be alive or should be alive, and then he claimed that that was true. But he also made a face. Like Larry David, he made a face, so I don't believe him. And then Marvin comes back in Resident Evil 2. And this is the other thing that I just saw today, by the way. It's the same freaking room. So he's not a zombie there, and then he's a zombie there. Come on. They messed up. They brought the zombie guy in there. Same room. So what other characters could connect with each other? You saw in the beginning of the trailer, they showed Leon and Claire moving through the city at the beginning. But they're, during that game, we didn't connect. So during this game, we can't backwards... Uh, we can't backwards connect. So... I don't think there's really anybody except Marvin that could possibly be it. Am I missing something? Is there any other character I'm forgetting about? Is there any other way that they could connect these games together? Uh, Kendrick says Elliot guy. Oh, so maybe all the cops. Yeah, the cops in the RPD. Because we have we know Jill's headed to the RPD. Or we think Jill's headed to the RPD. We know Carlos is headed to the RPD. And it's all before RE2. So all those cops theoretically are alive and there. So yeah, maybe we'll see uh, Elliot Edwards. Um, oh, Steven with a good point. Two dollar super chat says Chief Irons. Irons is around. Ben the reporter. He's around. I mean, I don't think we're gonna see any of these people, but oh, and then the other thing is the notes. The notes in the game, the files in the game. That's something where they can connect the games together. And that's what I wanted Resident Evil 2 Remake to do so bad. I was like, just leave a note that's like, connects the, the games together. They didn't. I think a note mentioned Resident Evil 1, like, kind of. And that was it. Armand says, Saf Sprint Africa, Adreville. Yeah, so puzzles is something I didn't really uh, add to this. So we'll save the puzzles for the end. Remember to ask about the puzzles at the end. How long will the story be? Uh, Hopefully long, but I don't know. All right, so that's kind of... I guess let's talk about that before we get in there. So let's talk about the puzzles. Everybody hates the water puzzle, and that's... If you're not familiar, haven't played in a while, they call it the water puzzle not because there's water in the puzzle. The end result of you solving this puzzle is that water becomes clear or something. I actually never figure out what does that even do. It clears the water, and then what? It opens a door, maybe? I don't know. So the puzzle is, it's like a shape lining up puzzle. There's three layers and you have to line up the shapes to match. It's, 
I don't know. My brain works on that really well. I like that puzzle. It's one of my favorites. Everyone hates it, but I love that puzzle because you can't memorize it. I mean, uh, apparently you can memorize it. There's different like three or four different starting points or something you, so you could memorize it but i don't know for me it's fun to to solve every single time uh what are some of the other puzzles there was there's a puzzle in the rpd where you have to find key cards and then open the computer and then it gives you the passwords to a uh safe thing and then you get an item one of the things that resident evil 2 did not have was if you knew the code to the safe, you didn't have to find the paper to open the safe. You could just run to the safe. So second time through the game, if you wrote down all the answers, you can now run through the game. However, I think there was one puzzle at least in Resident Evil 2 where you had to activate, you know, you couldn't just open it something or whatever. You had to activate the puzzle. I might be thinking of that wrong. Maybe that was Resident Evil 7. But that's, I, I like the games where you have to activate the puzzle and you can't just like look up all the codes, but Resident Evil 2 Remake was all about that. So don't know if they'll have puzzles like that again or if they'll make you actually do it. What was, what was the other puzzle? There was a puzzle in the uh, gas station where you just, you basically just press buttons for five minutes and you're going to solve it. I, I'm not exactly sure how to solve it, but you can figure out different patterns sometimes. Um, there's a puzzle with the steam that you can actually cheat on so there's there's only a few puzzles in I guess oh the clock puzzle that's like a song so that'll be interesting if they have that in there oh Scoob has a, a good question anyone think that once RE3 is released they will put Brad in RE2 Remake so earlier in the episode we talked about the fact that the reason he's we th that I think he's not in remake is because he dies differently. Nemesis doesn't kill him and infect him and turn him into a zombie, but instead blows him up in a helicopter. So I don't think so. But that would possibly explain that mis. Uh, so if you don't know, like a week ago, a mysterious trophy appeared in Resident Evil's game thing, and it said test or something, you know, placeholder, and people are like, is it a new DLC? Is it whatever? That would possibly explain that, you know, kill Brad Zombie would be a trophy, but I, yeah, I think the helicopter thing makes a lot of sense. <coughs> uh, the power generator puzzle is shock the zombies. The puzzle where you have to move the gears around to open the fountain. Uh, there's kind of a puzzle where you have to, with the mayor statue where you have to <coughs> move pieces back and forth. Not really technically a puzzle. <coughs> so... Um, and then anything else real quick uh, before we move on to the DLC and the, or not DLC, the pre-order and stuff like that. We talked about the enemies. We talked about all the characters. Oh, we didn't, we haven't mentioned Dario yet. So Dario is a lot of people's favorite character. He's who you start Resident Evil 3 with in a room. You're with this guy and he's like, oh, I'm annoying. Oh. Uh, and what happens with Dario is he's got a daughter and she's missing and he's in this situation and he wants to find her but he's a scaredy cat so he he hides in a truck jill finds a girl's body later and nobody knows is it dario's daughter it's like a big if you're into resident evil like the community like really into it it's like a mystery it's like the star wars who shot first oh is that uh the <coughs> the daughter <coughs> people think it is so we got Dario, and we have his daughter. His daughter was never in the original. We think it's a body on the ground, but we don't know. So the daughter might be a part of this, and I was thinking the Kendo daughter story. Now we got Dario and his daughter. They might have some kind of story. It would be completely different, you know, because I think the guy's kind of a goof. <clears throat> Whereas Kendo was more serious. At least in the remake, he was serious. He was really goofy in the original. And... Uh, <clears throat> So Dario was voiced by this comedian. He actually died in 2017. <coughs> and this is the other rumor. The Star's voice was is supposedly him. The guy who did Dario was the voice of Star's. I asked the Resident Evil 3 director through the chat. And he said he didn't know. So he couldn't confirm it. And he was the director. So we have no confirmation on that, but we're going to say that Dario's voice is that. And the guy was actually from either SCTV or SNL for a season. So he actually kind of made it. 
and then he was the voice of Dario. And Dario is also brought up in Resident Evil Outbreak, so some of you people love Outbreak. Uh, so go to Outbreak and read some of the files, and you'll read a ho there's a hotel in Outbreak or something, and then there's like a registry at hotels. They used you used to sign like a book apparently a long time ago instead of giving your credit card and a computer. So look at the files for that, and you can learn a little more about Dario and his daughter. Uh, I think it counts as canon, but I'm not sure. Anthony with the five dollars, uh, decapitated deaths. Oh, those are definitely in there. Um, some oh yeah they take they're gonna take our heads off uh, can they show that I think so oh good and then all types of gaming has a great point what about Barry where's Barry in the original game I th if you jump off the bridge Barry will come save you in a helicopter what happens if you does Barry always save you I actually never I haven't not jumped off the bridge because I played it the first time on a... I played it when I was a kid. I don't remember the endings. And the, but I played it as an adult on a stream and the guy was like... I was like, what do I do? And the guy was like, if you jump off, Barry saves you. So I was like, well, I'll just jump off. And I've never not jumped off. Uh, Peter says only if you jump. So if you jump off the bridge, you go up to the control tower and you hear a voice. And does it sound like... It kind of sounds like Barry, but I don't know that it's that you'd know it was Barry necessarily. Uh, so at the end you get in the chopper, you start to fly and then they show the back of the head and you realize it's it's Barry. So Barry comes and saves you. Uh, if you jump off the bridge, if you don't, who saves you? Nikolai does in the other ending. Huh. What if you shoot down the helicopter? Oh, I guess you, you don't have the option to shoot down the helicopter if you don't jump. Anyway, so Barry is in the original, but only in the ending. They don't have a character for him. They just have him in a CG movie or whatever it's called. What's it called? Full motion video. FMV movie. And uh, he saves him. So that's something I'm looking forward to is seeing if they do like on um, Redfield, you know. They brought Chris in for Resident Evil 7 even though he wasn't in the game. Are they going to bring Barry in? Uh, and then I wonder in Project Resistance if they're going to have other characters like this. But that's for another time. So, we talked about the game. We talked about everything. You really want the game. You love the game. We already knew that. You d you've been here for an hour. Over 660 people. That's a record for the channel, I'm sure. Um, checking out this stream. So now what do you do? Well, my experience with the res with video game community, not Resident Evil, video games in general, is everybody loves pre-order. I got a pre-order. I'm gonna. People are like, I put five dollars down and I'm gonna pay the rest later. I don't know how this pre-order works. Uh, GameStop. I know they try to trick you to pre-order, and really the only reason to ever pre-order is if it includes a bonus. So if there's no bonus, the game will not sell out. There's no reason to pre-order. Unless they give you something cool for it, whatever. So, and a lot of times it's like, you get a blimp in Grand Theft Auto. This is what you get if you pre-order in Resident Evil 3. And right now, the pre-orders are up on Best Buy for PlayStation 4, Xbox for PlayStation 4, and the PlayStation 4 store, the digital download. N not sure if it's up anywhere else. And it, looking at the chat, people are saying it might not be in. And Armand, yeah, I, I don't want to forget that either the endings of the game we got to talk about so bring me bring that back up and uh yeah so this i mean this is a cool uh one you know your original costumes but not only original costumes but they fixed carlos's hair in this version i'm guessing it's the same face maybe they did they change up the faces at all i don't know but one of the other guys i follow uh, uh does a lot of resident evil stuff here and there He's really into, like, l ladies, uh, you know. He's into those volleyball games, you know what I'm saying? Those, uh, what was that, Sega Saturn volleyball? Ladies on the beach volleyball. He's into that kind of video game character. So he was really pissed when uh, the, he saw that Jill didn't have, she had straps on her shirt. He doesn't like straps, and he, he thought they had uh, skimped on the upper body. Uh, so he's going to be into this version here, which is the original version. Uh, with the tube top thing and I don't think it looks that great I I don't 
I don't look at that and say, oh, that looks exactly like Resident Evil 3. I feel like it looks a little different. Uh, and then Carlos just looks weird, but whatever. This is what you get for uh, the pre-order. So soundtrack swap. Resident Evil 2, you pre-order, you get soundtrack swap. You could turn the old school music on. Are they going to have that? We don't know yet. It wasn't announced yet. All, how many songs are in Resident Evil 3? I'm not sure about the music in that. I, I don't, it doesn't like resonate with me. So uh, you guys would know better than I do about the music. Uh, but yeah, and anyway, speaking of this Jill, just in general, um, I want to marry her, so. I'm just going to call her my girlfriend from now on. <laughs> Alright, collector's edition, that's the other thing that came out. Uh, the difference between the U.S. So U.S., Japan, and Europe always has some tweak that's different. The Japanese version, the only difference was that their their digital download is actually two CDs. So uh, that's the only one, and I didn't see the European one yet. So uh, I think this is basically it. And this is this. It looks like the same exact box. I actually think that box is actually in this. But it's the same box, except now it's red. The art book is something you got with RE2. And the statue. So having, now you, like, so I don't like collector's editions. I bought this because I have the channel, and you guys support the channel. And it allows me to spend money on things like this to show you guys. This is cool. By itself... It's okay, but now if Jill's here, now it's like, okay, now it's awesome. So, now, I need to have this because now it's like, like they picked the perfect thing for my brain, like the same exact thing, and now I can put two next to each other. I love it. And there they are next to each other. Oh man, that Jill doesn't look that good. Looks like Jodie Foster. So, anyway, so the same size, basically. Um, all right, so what are you guys excited about? Uh, the Steelbook for the original was only in Europe. Because I actually never... I never even opened Resident Evil in the collector's edition because Capcom sent me a copy. I bought a copy. And then I got one in the collector's edition like a week later when that was shipped. Or three days later. So I already had the game and opened it and everything. And so now I have a copy of the game unopened. Um, so the box is dumb. It's just there because... I mean, it's a neat little box if you want to put some stuff in it. But the art book was... I looked at it once. I don't even think I looked at every page. Uh, so I guess I'm buying this for the Jill figure. <laughs> oh, and does anybody know what the price was on the on the RE2 version? It was very expensive. Was it 400? That's that too high. Anyway, it's very expensive, and you're basically paying for the Jill figure. Uh, the map is neat. The other one had some poster. I, you know, it's in a box. So why am I so excited? I have no idea. Maybe just the statue because I don't use any of the other crap. Also, I can't buy this because I have to play the game. First of all, hopefully they send me the game again like they did last time. But uh, early. So, by the way, if you guys are new here, uh, we played. We get to play Resident Evil 2 like 24 hours before it came out. Capcom sends us copies of games. Uh, so we'll probably do that. But if they didn't do that and I bought the game, I can't get this because it doesn't ship like the same day. And in the past with Resident Evil 7, they had some different shipping items. Uh, Mike says it was $200. Okay. Something along... Was Resident Evil 4 $400? And then there were different prices in different countries. Um, and then RE7, Europe got a dummy finger hard drive or something. Ah. But I think they're trying to maybe make them similar this time. Uh, and it also says content will depend on your location. I saw another screenshot where it was the double disc was a, uh, was a CD, so... Uh, they might change something up for the for Europe, North America, and Japan. Those are the three versions that they have. 
Um, and then somebody mentioned that we need we didn't talk about at the end of the game in Resident Evil 3 when you beat the game they give you an epilogue and it's just like a little paragraph about a different character and I love this stuff because my f what I want them to do is clarify the storylines in RE2 Remake they clarified a few storylines but they even made some even more ambiguous I want them to clear, clear stuff up so those epilogues are awesome because they're in the game that means they're true they're not like fake and they tell you something. So I hope they have something like that in this game. I don't know that they'll do that because here's why. You have to beat the game 13 times, Armand, is that right? There are 13-ish epilogues. So you actually have to beat the game 13 times in a row on the same save file to unlock all the epilogues. Uh, they're cool, but I don't know beating a game like 13 times is kind of crazy <laughs> so i don't know if maybe they have the epilogues and you buy them you know resident evil always likes to do oh you buy them or you buy a snow globe the worst things ever uh remake didn't do that stuff i didn't think right they didn't have collector stuff or buying figures did they um and nicholas just watched the video with the uh the guy the director re3 um, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, the epilogue. So, the other thing, there, there's also, um, in the original game, if you find all the notes in the exact order you're supposed to find the notes, you unlock something. Uh, there's four costumes you can unlock. You can unlock a Dino Crisis costume, a business suit or something, uh, the original outfit, so, uh, what kind of costumes are they going to have? Are they going to charge us for them? Are they going to have a Dino Crisis one? People are... If they have a Dino Crisis one, everyone's going to be like, Dino Crisis remake confirmed! By the way, <laughs> Dino Crisis in this engine, if they made it more horror-based and less arcade actually would be totally awesome. I don't know how they do it with the dinosaurs, though. I was actually curious how they made the hunters. Because they scan these things in... And when they made the mold in RE7, they, like, put beef on these guys. And, uh, oh, I saw, like, a picture of them scanning some other weird creature or fake creature. So it's, it's weird how they took, they're going to have, uh, how they created the, the hunter. They probably just made a hunter costume and put it on a guy or something. Uh, so behind the scenes will be pretty interesting. So in Resident Evil 2 Remake, the costumes... Did you have to buy... Some of them came with Deluxe Edition. Some of them came for beating the game. And some of them came for pre-orders. It was something like that. But they had more costumes than I thought they would have. And they were kind of weird. I don't know. They didn't really fit. But this game it was kind of known for its costumes. Because everybody likes to do the Dino Crisis costume. Because every time I watch somebody live stream this, they're the Dino Crisis lady. And it changes their hair color too, which is cool. <clears throat> so the costumes, that'll be a fun bit. Um... But really, by the time... I mean, I didn't really switch costumes that often in RE2. It's just kind of a fun thing, you know? Some of you guys like that. I, I'd rather they focus more on some of the gameplay or whatever. Uh, but uh, costumes are cool. And then the mods are going to be where you can get even more costumes and stuff. Those are pretty neat for RE2. They may, they've given me good content for videos. Um, let's talk about some of the other unlockables real quick. Uh, if you beat Nemesis, like, the first two times you get a handgun, two pieces of handgun, uh, that shoots zombies' critical headshots more often. If you beat them two more times, I think you get a shotgun that's enhanced, uh, or the short sawed-off shotgun or something. If you beat them two more times, you get, or one more time, you get a first aid pack with three first aid sprays fitting into one slot on inventory. And I think if you beat them all the times, you get unlimited ammo with at least the handgun. So there's all those unlockables. Um, there was mercenary modes, which we think we're, they're going to switch out for Project Resistance. What else could you unlock in that game? Was there other weapons? Was there a rocket launcher or anything? I feel like there was not. 
Uh, Thagoras says, would there be a blonde Jill costume? So that would be interesting if they brought back different Jills from... And I, I had it in the last episode on the slides, the different Jills from the different eras, but uh, I don't have that on me right now. That was in the last show. Uh, so let's do a quick recap, shall we, before we head out? So today, what happened today? 9 a.m., PlayStation State of Play. A show where they showed a bunch of new trailers for new games. They all had a goose in them. I don't understand. They're all, like, I guess geese are hot right now. Uh, and then they said, here's a trailer for Project Resistance. And I was like, uh, blah, blah, blah. And then I freaked out because about 25 seconds in, I realized this that looks like Jill or whatever. Sounds like Jill. Um, and then Armand... Uh, okay, yeah. And then Armand's mentioned in a ranking. So there's a really weird ranking system in RE3 where it's not how many times you save, but basically you get penalized points for doing different things, using herbs, all different kinds, first aid spray, saving... And then they add up points, and if your points get above a certain level, you drop a grade. So you want to keep your points under two, you know, whatever the number is, five thousand. Um, so they'll they'll have rankings again because a lot of the uh, DLC for RE or not DLC bonuses for RE2 were based on rankings. And then what they did in RE2 when I've been gone, I've been gone for a while. They apparently sold, sell them now. So I spent. 80 hours uh, unlocking all these things and then they're like oh by the way you could buy it for five dollars now three months later so will they make the challenges as hard as they did because the, the challenge was hard for remake um, so and I'm actually gonna pull up at the end of this uh, the reaction like uh, the videos on there and I want to watch it myself to see what I did because I remember just staring and then like going nuts uh, so Jill in apartment nemesis comes first person probably cutscene looks in the mirror, thinks she's a zombie. We think it's because she got infected. Carlos takes over at that point, and now we're at Resident Evil 3, um, or after Resident Evil 2. And then Justice with a $5 super debt, hope they bring back the mini skirt cop costume. If you don't jump, Carlos flies the helicopter. Okay. My favorite thing to do is to um, shoot down the helicopter, because then Carlos does a flying fist pump. And he only does it if you shoot down the helicopter. All right, so Jill, she's got a bunch of stuff. We already know all that stuff. We assume it. Just like Resident Evil 2, add-ons to weapons are back. Looks like possibly more zombies around. Possibly a dodging technique. Show you right here again. Cable car's back. Carlos got a machine gun. Mikael, back. Looks kind of shady. Carlos looks kind of shady. There's this weird map thing that might have Easter eggs. There's the uh, bystanders running around. And that's not a cutscene. That is a picture of the engine. There's the... Uh, Leon and... Uh, so the trailer talked about the original. This is Murphy. He's from the original. He, do he doesn't turn out good. This is Tyrell from the original. He do doesn't turn out good. This guy, he's the mega boss, Nikolai. He killed both those guys, basically. And he's trying to kill Carlos and Jill and everybody. There's Brad. He likes to float in the air. Uh, Brad, he originally died from Nemesis, became a zombie. We think they removed that, and we think he dies in the helicopter. Um, I will never believe that that is that thing that you say it is. That is a hunter. <laughs> Why would they show that other creature? Why wouldn't they show the hunter? That's what everybody wants to see. It's scaly. It lives in the water. It's green. It's got the claws. There's a decapitated head right next to it. It's not hugging anything. It's stalking around like this. It's a hunter, brah. Uh, Nemesis, he's uh, powerful. He's got some tape on him. That comes from early advertising. He was created in a lab somehow. We don't exactly know. 
Uh, the backstory so far says that he was created before this event happened, and maybe they were storing him away. Maybe the shot brings him back to life, and that's why he's, his fist moves after the shot, and his eyes open. It wakes him up. They transport him in the helicopter in this big, cool coffin thing. Cartridge for bioweapon. They drop him in the city. Resident Evil Resistance is a thing. Uh, and then we might see Marvin twice. If you pre-order, you get these cool original costumes. There's a collector's edition. The cool part is it comes with a Leon matching statue for Jill. And you can follow me on social media. So, man, we covered a lot of stuff. 116 minutes or two hours. Basically two hours. Uh, two hour episode of the show. Uh, earlier today came out with a video that talks about everything we did in three minutes and has some more stuff that we didn't mention. So be sure to watch the video, subscribe, stuff like that. And I'm actually want to watch the video. That's my reaction video. Um, if you want to help support the channel, because I no longer have a salaried job, and every time I do this channel, it means I'm not doing getting clients for my regular job. So any support would be really awesome. Uh, thumbs ups are awesome. We, if we can get to 300, that would be cool. Uh, what else? Oh, comments, comments on the video, all that stuff is support well as well. Telling your friends, that's another way to support. So many ways to support the channel. That is the video that we're... <laughs> that's not what I want. That's what we're doing now. Alright. So we're going to watch my reaction here real quick. Before we end it. Also, why do they play ads on your own videos? I thought that was like against policy or whatever. I think this is it. Oh, that wasn't even Final Fantasy VII, was it? <laughs> Alright, so, so here we go. This is what happened earlier. I've never, I have not seen this. I don't think you guys can hear it. So you can just watch my face here. I don't think we have to hear it. It'll be funnier if you if you don't hear it, maybe. By the way, I spent a lot of time on that studio. This is where I realize. Nope, I still haven't realized it yet. I still think it's Project Resistance because I see those timers. And it was on mute. I think I'm starting to realize it. Oh, I still didn't realize it. Oh, what if it, what if I did, I'm sure I cut back. So I think... I just, that's, so I just said, I think it's Nemesis. And I just basically am repeating it. That's Nemesis, that's Jill. That's Nemesis, that's Jill. This is hilarious. I'm just watching my eyes here. I still don't believe it. Looks like it's just starting to hit. I'm starting to believe it's actually Resident Evil 3, even though it's clearly Resident Evil 3. <laughs> It's 
It's like Inception over here. I'm like, I, I swear to God, I'm like blacked out right now. I was like staring at it, hoping. And then this, I thought this was like resistance again. That's eh, not that great, but this was real. These other people put out the fake ones. That looks kind of fake though, but I swear it wasn't. All right, that sucked. What a waste of the end of the show. <laughs> Anyways, so thank you all for such an awesome time here today. We had a world record 650 viewers tonight. Uh, I really appreciate all the support. Make sure you check out my videos. Over 300 likes, two hours. We covered everything. I've never done a theory chat where I talked for two straight hours and had like stuff to talk about and left out stuff. Like we had so much that we left out. So I'm really glad I threw together this, these slides because I don't know how many slides there are. There are like 80 slides or something. Something ridiculous. There were like 80 slides in this thing. Uh, I'm super excited. We're probably going to, you know, follow me on Twitter. Where's Barry B? There's so many different uh, screenshots that I tweeted out today before the show. So if you want to be on top of the stream right away, like before we even go live, follow on Twitter because all day we're doing screenshots we're zooming in we're giving news we're linking articles and then if there's stuff like that then we always go live theory chat in the evening so we're gonna do a couple more theory chats uh, you know this week I've got some work to do next couple days and stuff uh, possibly at night but anytime something new comes out come to the channel come to Twitter you can follow on Facebook and Instagram. Where's Barry B? It's the best place to contact me is on Twitter. Not today because I got like a billion retweets, so I, like I can't even handle it. It's like for one day you get to be like a real YouTuber, and then tomorrow it goes back to normal. But what a fun day! Resident Evil 3. I was just like nobody likes Resident Evil 3. Uh, only the true fans like it. Nobody remembers it. I was wrong about everything. Uh, this game has more hype than RE2 does right now, so it's pretty crazy what's happening. And I uh, just appreciate all the comments and everything. Uh, thank you to Justice and Steven and Anthony and Demon and Kevin and uh, Jason for and Chevy for all the super chats and donations today. Thank you to OF and Andrew and Speed Shadow and Caucasian and everybody else who subscribed today. 500 people still in here. I never want to leave. I'm just going to sleep in the RPD tonight and I'm never going home. This was an awesome day for the channel and the chat was awesome today as well. And I don't know what happened to all the trolls. Maybe I've already banned them all, but the last two episodes of Theory Chat We've had 10,000 total viewers or something like that, and then, and like no trolls, so I don't know what's going on. Oh, Demon, oh, Demon had it under control today. I probably just missed everything the last one, but. Um, so this is the end of the episode. Barry, if you're watching this, this is where you're going to edit out the ending. Uh, so if you guys want to stick around for a little while, we'll just do some more chatting and uh, as I calm down here, but the show is officially over. And yeah, I don't think I'm gonna do any more chatting because I did just talk for two hours. So thank you guys for watching. Catch you later, evil dudes. Stick around for the ending theme song and bye, Amanda. Follow me on Twitter, where's Barry B? And don't forget to watch my videos that came out today. And there was a social media only video, so you can only see it on Twitter and Instagram.
<laughs> Welcome to the family, son. Come join the Crimson Army where the residents are evil now. We won't harm you. You'll get videos of theories and let's plays. Where's Barry Hill? Have something to say. Here's Barry Hill play all day. He's never really crunched for time. <laughs> A Jill sandwich comes to mind, but that's just one of those lines you'll find in the comments. A heart of gold, keeping account. Number of deaths, a high amount. Will Barry live? Come find out on the next screen stream. We'll figure it out. It's the Zombs together, whether Jack is a dull boy or he wants to play. The Zombs are here to stay, even if number seven gets delayed. The data mine, no spoilers will make a change. Cause in our mind, where's Barry's king? Don't forget to like and subscribe. And by Amanda, you're out of time. Yeah. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And by Amanda, you're out of time. Like, oh my god. By Amanda, you're out of time. Sell and